as the Jayhawks will kick off. Pat Weir and Terry Nagel back. And they run into each other, and it is Nagel. And he is pounded down at the 17-yard line by a fired-up Jayhawk defense. Taking a look at the offensive backfield of the Emmitsburg Ehawks, Ron Bout is at fullback. The quarterback is Chuck Winkleblack. Pat Nagel is at tailback. And Terry Nagel is at the wingback. So first and 10, just the start of the ball game. Earlier today, Sigourney beat Hudson 16 to nothing for the 2A title. Watch him hurry up. And the give in there to Bout. And he picks up about seven yards as he crosses the 25-yard line. The Emmitsburg offensive line, Jeff Johnson at split end, Paul Lenners, Ken O'Leary at guard, Dan Needham at center, Steve Milam at right guard, Benji Fed at right tackle, and Mike Klepper, the tight end, and he is also a good one. Second and three, watch him hurry up. The give to Bout, and he has the first down as he crosses the 30-yard line. Emmitsburg, a first down in just two plays, giving the ball to their all-stater, Ron Vout. They don't waste any time. Only 54 seconds gone to the first quarter of the game. They have their first first down. They're advancing the ball nicely. It'll be interesting to see when they uh, pull up on their offense and fail that hurry-up play and go slower. Vout has 1,100 yards on the season. Inside handoff to Vout. And Bout has picked up only a yard and a half that time before he is wrestled down by the entire Urbandale defensive line. Up there for Urbandale, Mark Kinzer, Walt Stewart, Mike Orr, Jim Goodman, and Brian Barkhold. Emmitsburg should be going to the air this game. This has uh, been an interesting season for them where they've developed a big play. They've had 15 or 16 touchdown passes this year alone which is different than past Emmitsburg team. Wingleblack has 16 touchdowns of the year, and he goes in the option. And Nagel has some trouble with the ball, and it is recovered by Urbandale, number 81, Mark Kinzer. Mark Kinzer came up with the fumble option. And Urbandale gets the first break of the game. Never had possession at all. He was juggling in midair. Hey, let me have the ball, and there it goes. Big break, that's what they're looking for. Only two minutes gone in the first quarter, and the Jayhawks have the ball. Jayhawks will go out of the wishbone. And the inside to Lee Knoll. Six foot, 150 pound senior. He picks up five. Stopped by Mark Borman and Mark Luer. Second and five on the 17 and a half yard line. The first break of the game goes to the Urbandale Jayhawks. Todd Kim, the quarterback. And Kim will go to John White. Inside. And he'll pick up only about a yard and a half. The offensive backfield of Urbandale. Paul Minderman at the fullback spot. Todd Kim at quarterback. John White and Lee Knoll, the other running back. Third and three, the ball at the 15-yard line. And the handoff to White. He's inside the five. First down and goal for the Urbandale Jayhawks. Let's take a look at the offensive line for Urbandale. Brian Fink at split end. Scott Williams at tackle. Mike Orr, the guard. Al Carver at center. Jeff Orr at the other guard. Chris Neve and Doug Allen at tight end. First and goal at the five-yard line for the Urbandale Jayhawks. Paul Minderman gets nowhere. This is what we were talking about earlier for the Jayhawks to try to get on the board as soon as possible. Of course, no playoff team this year has been able to score against Emmitsburg. And here we are, four minutes into the game, and the Jayhawks threatening to score. They have quite a nose guard up there front. All-State, Mark Borman, 5'11", 195 pounds. And the handoff is to White. And he doesn't get much room either. Yardage is going to be tough going inside. 
The E-Hawks are really stacking up inside. It's going to be a third and four. Actually, third and one on the four-yard line. Third and goal from the four-yard line. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Todd Kim, the quarterback, and he keeps it. Pitches the ball out there to number 15, Brian Freeze, and he is wrapped up by green and gold shirts at the eight-yard line. Here we see the replay. Trying to get outside the Jayhawks desperately, but the pursuit was excellent. Turn the play inside, and there we go. No yardage, and it's going to be a tough field goal attempt from the left hash mark to far hash mark. Extreme angle. Mark Kinzer in to try the field goal out of the hole that Todd Kim. It's going to be a 24-yard attempt. A 24-yard field goal attempt on fourth and goal, and Kim wants to throw the football. Incomplete, intended for Paul Minderman as Urbandale fakes the field goal, and Kim throws an incomplete pass at the three-yard line. That play nearly worked. We can see the coach, Denny Ferrix, is trying to mix them up, and right from the beginning, that's what his goal is. So Emmitsburg, which fumbled the football on its first possession, but then doesn't give up anything, has the ball again. And that's Bout across the 10 to the 14-yard line. Nice first down pick up there, five yards. We'll give him six on the play. Second and four, the ball just outside the 13-yard line of the Emmitsburg Ehawks as they hurry up and go. And Bout has the first down, but there is a penalty flag in the offensive backfield. Brad Saban coming up to make the stop from the safety position. It's gonna be against the Ehawks to Emmitsburg. Motion penalty against the Emmitsburg Ehawks, and that nullifies the first down. They get ball, down over. The ball brought back to the eight yard line. It'll be second and nine. Bobby Kaufman in there rotating the plays with Pat Nagel. Of course, the big back, Ron Bout, the All Stater, six foot, 180 pounds, over 1,100 yards rushing. And the give to Bout, and he's racked up by a host of white shirts. Jay Patti from the outside linebacker slot, 5'10", 155-pound senior. There's no room. The Jayhawks going to try to hold the Ehawks on this third down play. Crucial third down play, otherwise Emmitsburg's going to be punting from their end zone. Third and eight. Chunk Wiggleblack moves his club up, and that's out. And he has the first down and more across the 20, to across the 25 to the 29-yard line. Mark Kinzer and Jay Patti finally make the stop on Bout, who picks up the first down out to the 28-yard line. Throughout the 11 games this season, Ron Vought had gained 1,100 yards on the ground. Terry Nagel also has 500 yards, and Vought gets the carry again. He has the first down and more across the 40, and he has wrestled down at the 44-yard line. Took three players with him that time. John Williams, Brad Saban, a couple of those people that had to bring Ron Vought down. They're going for the ball. They remember what happened last time, but no chance, as we see on the replay. Watch him grab for the ball, desperately trying to take it away. No way. Bot's going to hang on. First and 10, 44-yard line, and the inside handoff to Terry Nagel, and he has another Ehawk first down into Urbandale territory. This is the Emmitsburg style of play. Troy Richards coming up from the safety position to make the tackle for the Jayhawks. Troy, a six foot, 150 pound junior. 
So the Ehawks are rolling. They were stopped last time when they fumbled deep in their own territory. They hand off to Vout. And is he rammed down by Paul Minderman? Six foot, 195. He looked like he was about a, a 6'5", 250-pounder. He just threw Vout to the ground. did look that big to Vout. Vout getting nowhere. It'll bring up a second and 10. Just the start of the ball game. Under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Emmitsburg stopped an early Urbandale drive, and we are scoreless. And Winkleblack wants to throw the football. Complete. First pass of the game for Emmitsburg. That's a nice one. They pick up eight yards. Winkleblack looking to Mike Klepper. And he was nicely covered in there by John Williams. But Klepper came away with the pass. He was a starter last year. And this year, caught 14 passes for 250 yards and three touchdowns. And showed some very good hands on that play. Big play, third and a yard and a half. They must cross the 35. They give to Bout. He has the first down, down to the 32-yard line. Fourth consecutive first down of this series. They're marching right downfield, beginning at their own eight-yard line. They have now advanced to Urbandale's. 32-yard line. Walt Stewart finally able to bring down Mr. Vout. First and 10, the ball on the 32, and Winkleblack on the option picks up maybe a yard at best. Tried to turn it upfield, but there was no going. Winkleblack has rushed for a couple hundred yards, excuse me, Russ, passed for 775 more, completed more than 50% of his passes, as we mentioned earlier, for 16 touchdowns. So if they have to go to the air, they definitely will. Winkleblack can throw the football quite well. Inside to Nagel. And Nagel very close to another first down for the Emmitsburg Ehawks. Scott Linus making the stop for Urbandale. Those off-tackle plays have been devastating. It was Vaught usually running. But on this... Another first down for Emmitsburg on the Jayhawks' 22-yard line. And they've been controlling the ball, except for a series of four plays from scrimmage. It's been all Emmitsburg. And they did not get set that time. Steve Milam unable to get set. And this one will be brought back, a five-yard penalty against the Ehawks. It will also give Urbandale a chance to regroup and think about that quick starting offense. Of course, what the Ehawks will do, Russ, sometimes they'll go up there and they won't go on the first <laughs> hut. And then it's a surprise. It's about 11 players from Urbandale jump <laughs> offside. But they won't do that very often, maybe about three or four times in a ballgame. First and 15. And they give it to Vout. And he picks up about three or four. Mark Kinzer on the stop for the Jayhawks. Trying to gain back the yardage that they lost on the penalty there. They picked up four of the five yards that they lost. It's still second and 11 for Emmitsburg on Urbandale's 23-yard line. Left hash mark. They get it inside to Nagel, and he has the first down or very close to it, inside the 12-yard line. So they go on that counter to Terry Nagel. Terry Nagel. Very similar to a play just three or four downs ago. Pat Nagel, off tackle. There he goes. Actually, that's Terry. Pat Nagel is one of the tailbacks, and Terry Nagel is out there at that slot position. And he picks up the first down, so. So brothers Pat and Terry, and we'll try to keep them straight here. Terry Nagel is the man who will get the ball the most often. Pat Nagel rotates in there at the tailback slot. And it's out across the 10, down to the eight yard line. 
In case you're wondering, in this series, Emmitsburg has rattled off five consecutive first downs. We have about 20 seconds left in the first quarter, and it is possible for Emmitsburg to gain another first down before a touchdown as they'd have to get down to the one-yard line. Looks like time's going to run out in this first quarter. We're going to shift to the other end of the field. Third quarter score, Iowa leads Michigan State 33-16. to 16. And at the end of the first quarter with the score, Urbandale 0, Emmitsburg 0. We'll be back in a moment. The end of the first quarter, we're about ready to start the second period of play in this 3A title game. It is scoreless, but Emmitsburg is threatening to score. They have a second and seven situation. The ball just outside the eight-yard line. And Russ Gondek, their offense is impressive. They control the ball for approximately 10 minutes of the first quarter. Even though there is no score, they were in control of the ball, marching downfield, and here they are. And they quickly go to Vout. And Vout gets it down to the six-yard line. It's going to leave a third and five for Emmitsburg. They can gain a first down without scoring a touchdown. And remember that Winkleblack is a good passer. Watch for Mike Klepper or Jeff Johnson. Johnson has caught 21 balls this season, but nine of them for touchdowns. So he likes the smell of the end zone. And they might go to him on this play. He's number 88. And he's on your right side. Inside to Bout. Down across the five to the four-yard line. It'll bring up a fourth and three. Dwayne Dwayne's a realist. Let's see if he's going to go for the touchdown or just try to get the points. Mr. Ron Bout, an all-stater with guys like Tom Kibler and Tom Holt, who we saw last night in the 4A game, Hempstead and Valley. They're going to go for it. Third and three. Fourth, Fourth and three. three. Fourth down. Fourth and three, and it's not quite as hurried up this time. They're going to be close on the time. Jeff Johnson is out on that left side now. And Emmitsburg moves. Number 70, Benji Fett, a two-year starter. It's academic now. They're going for the field goal. He just made Dwayne Twait's mind up. <laughs> Mr. Twait is going to go for the field goal now. Of course, earlier in the ballgame, after an Emmitsburg fumble, Urbandale had an opportunity to score, had a similar situation, and they faked the field goal and threw an incomplete pass on the three-yard line. They were rushing on that last down. It was close to the 30 seconds that they're allowed to get the playoff. Dan Needham to try the field goal. Left footer. And it is up and good. Emmitsburg is on the scoreboard. So with the score, the E-Hawks three and the Jayhawks nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Berg has just marched the football 93 yards in 16 plays after stopping an Urbandale threat. And Dan Needham has just kicked a 27-yard field goal. Emmitsburg on top in the 3A title game, 3 to nothing. 10 minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the second period of play. And Needham has just teed up the football. Back deep for the Urbandale Jayhawks, Brian Freeze and Rod Klein. And the ball is kicked away from them. It is fielded by Lee Knoll, who is wrapped up at the 28-yard line by number 22, Pat Ware. So this time, Russ Gondek, the Urbandale Jayhawks don't get quite so nice a field position. No, they're going to have to do it all on their own on offense, and they're trying to advance downfield against a playoff experience team, Emmitsburg, their 16th playoff game. Urbandale, first and 10, 27-yard line. That's Paul Minderman in motion. And the play goes nowhere. Year in, year out. It's just amazing how Dwayne Twait can continue to come up with teams like that. And he has a pretty mean wrestling squad up there, too, at Emmitsburg. Last year winning the state title in their division. Excellent wrestlers from Emmitsburg. 
Some of them down in Iowa City now, mm -hmm. wrestling for the Hawks. Second and eight for the Jayhawks. And Kim wants to throw the football. And his man out there is Brian Fink. Brian Fink just couldn't get to the football. Little apprehension there. He didn't know whether to stop or try to go. Threatening to cause offensive pass interference, so he elected not to go for it. And it and worked. By the way, Russ, we keep it in the family here. Kevin Twait, the coach's son, on the coverage of Brian Fink. <laughs> Third and eight for the Jayhawks. Oh, his own man, Lee Noel, going nowhere, loss of a few yards, and Urbandale will bring the punting unit on. Number 59 down on the field there. Absolutely no room to go. Marty Elbert and Mike Klepper, two of the men on the stop. This will be the first punt of the game, which is kind of surprising. Really, beautiful. Jerry Woody's punt is a good one. And Pat Weir returns the fumble, football, but fumbles it. And Urbandale has the second fumble recovery of the ball game. They just took the ball away from him. It wasn't actually a fumble. Pat Weir is not a big kid, only 5'8", 140 pounds. And as Russ mentioned, the Jayhawks just literally took the football away as they wrestled into the ground. Opportunity strikes again for the Jayhawks, this time on Emmitsburg's 41-yard line. So Kim back in there at quarterback at the 41-yard line. Paul Minderman in motion, and Kim wants to throw the football. He's got Fink out there, but he overthrows him. Same play that they tried just a couple of downs ago. Overthrown again. Chuck Winkleblack, the quarterback, also in there at safety, and he was the man covering Big Brian Fink, who looks a lot taller than six foot and 165 pounds. If that combination ever works, there's going to be a touchdown because he's been behind the defenders both times. Urbandale, second and ten. The ball in Emmitsburg territory. Rod Klein going nowhere. Lots of a couple. So far, the Emmitsburg defense is really showing me things. It's going to bring up a third and 12. So here we are again. The Jayhawks have an opportunity, but the E-Hawk defense is clamped on them. Three series of downs for Urbandale, and each time they've gone nowhere. Midway through the second quarter, seven minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Emmitsburg on top, seven or three to nothing. And Kim on the pitch to John White who steps out of bounds at the 40-yard line, so he gains only three, and it will be a fourth down again. It was a gallant effort there, but he needed 12 yards, and of course, far short of the first down, so it's gonna bring up a punting situation. A couple of juniors in on the tackle, Mark Borman and Kevin Twait, the son of Dwayne Twait, the coach at Emmitsburg. Emmitsburg on top in this football game, three to nothing. Dan Needham's 27 yard field goal with 10-12 remaining in the second quarter. Terry Woody will be putting, and he's got a good foot. And Weir calls for oh, the fair catch, bounce. but the ball bounces around and is fielded at the one yard line. Brad Bargold is the man down there to pick up that ball as it bounced around, didn't know which way it was going to go, and Bargles picked it up at the one-foot line. The Emmitsburg receiver signaled it for it to go into the end zone. The ball had a different idea. Instead of advancing forward, it bounced laterally, and it's down on the one-foot yard line. You can't be much closer to the end zone. They're going to go for the safety if they can. Nice little punt there, 41 yards by Terry Woody, a junior. And he did what every punter wants to do, get the ball inside the 10-yard line. In fact, it's on the one-foot line. Emmitsburg with a long way to go. They go to Vout, and he gets maybe only a yard. Watch this Look ball bounce. One way, then the other, and there's Bargles at the one-foot line. 
Excellent job. Of course, Emmitsburg drove the football 93 yards on 16 plays the last time. This time it'll be 99 and a half if they do it. And off inside to Bout. And they're not going anywhere now. The Jayhawks have come up with a couple of opportunistic plays in the first quarter. They had the ball inside Emmitsburg's 10-yard line, failed to score. Here they have Emmitsburg pinned deep in their own territory. It's going to be a third and eight. If they can hold them, Emmitsburg will be forced to punt from deep in their own end zone. Inside handoff to Nagel, and he does not get the first down. Harry Nagel gets up to the nine-yard line, but it will be fourth and two, and we'll see the punting unit. That play works very well, Russ, but I think they needed it in a play earlier. I don't think the Jayhawks will go for the block here. He's well back in the end zone. Paul Johnson from there his end zone. And Rod Klein will take it. He breaks one tackle as he goes to the wall. He's got a wall out there across the 40 and to the 30-yard line. So Rod Klein... Runs about 60 yards to pick up about 20. <laughs> it's going to be the third time inside Emmitsburg territory. This time it's the 30-yard line for Urbandale. And you have to pick up on those opportunities. Leonard's finally making the stop for Emmitsburg. First and 10, Urbandale at the Emmitsburg 30-yard line. Lee Knoll picks up two. Very little passing in this game, except for a few incompletions and one complete pass. And hence, it's gone very fast. The game started just about a half hour ago, and we're left with 440 left in the half. Second and eight, Emmitsburg on top. Three to nothing, Urbandale with the ball. A hand off to White, and he gets across the 25 to the 23. It's going to bring up a third and three. You can bet if they don't make it that they're going to go for the first down no matter what. Mark Foreman, 5'11", 195-pound junior nose guard, making the tackle. And another big third down play for Urbandale. First down, Rod Klein. And he just does not want to go down. Rod Klein picks up the first down for the Jayhawks. Marty Elbert and Terry Nagel finally wrestle him back. It's going to be a first and 10 from the 15 as a result of this beautiful run. 38, Rod Klein would not go down. John White gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a gain of one. Mike Klepper, 6'1", 190-pound linebacker, there to wrestle him down. Inside three and a half minutes in the first half, Emmitsburg on top three to nothing, but Urbandale threatening. And Kim gives it off to White, who gets it down to the 10 going to leave about a third and six, third and five from the 10-yard line, just outside the 10. Jayhawks knocking on scoring opportunity again. Todd Kim isn't a bad little passer either. But watch Brian Fink and Doug Allen, the two in. And up inside to Lee Knoll, and he is pushed back. Short of the first down, but I think that Urbandale was just trying to get the ball in the middle of the field. And I would imagine that they would go for a field goal. There is a timeout on the field with Emmitsburg ahead. Three to nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. In the first half with Emmitsburg on top by a score of three to nothing. But Urbandale has an opportunity right now to tie that ball game up. Mark Kinzer will be trying a 26-yard field goal. Todd Kim, the hole. 
The kick is up and good, and we have a tie ball game. Emmitsburg 3, Urbandale 3. We'll be back in just a moment. We have a tie score here in the Uni Dome, the 3A title game between the Emmitsburg E-Hawks and the Urbandale Jayhawks. Urbandale has just scored on a 26-yard field goal by Mark Kinzer, marching 30 yards in seven plays after a fumble on a punt. Kinzer set to kick off, and Weir will take the football at the 13-yard line. He finally wrestled to the ground at the 25. Pile of white shirts down there, at least four or five on the gang tackle. Mike Hoy, one of these on the tackle, along with Greg Freeman. Especially teams, of course, very important. First and 10, Emmitsburg at the 25 yard line. Inside to Terry Nagel, and he picks up about nine yards to the 35 yard line. Slightly less than two minutes remaining in the first half. Score tied 3-3, and Emmitsburg on the march again. Jay Patti finally stopped Terry Nagel after a nine-yard gain. Emmitsburg, plenty of time to get down the field. We're inside of two minutes, second and one. The handoff to Vout. Penalty markers fly. And Vout gets it up to the 40-yard line but there is a flag and it will probably be holding. Emmitsburg has had absolutely poor, poor field position the entire afternoon. They've had to make their own luck happen. On the other hand, the Jayhawks have been able to take advantage of miscues. And Emmitsburg again is being marched back in their own territory. Emmitsburg loses 15 yards on that play, holding on the interior line. And instead of a first down, it will be second and 14. Ball back on the 22-yard line. Inside to Vout. And he picks up about six or seven as he crosses the 25-yard line. And it'll be a third and eight. Mike Orr and John Williams. A couple of big seniors in the linebacker's slot for Urbandale making the tackle. Third and eight, Emmitsburg. And Winkleblack wants to throw the football. Jeff Johnson's got it. He may go all the way. Emmitsburg, touchdown, Winkleblack to Jeff Johnson. Three yards, Chuck Winkleblack to Jeff Johnson. Watch it again. Winkleblack just throws it out there, and Johnson runs under it. He's the speedster. Nine touchdowns on the year before that one. Now he has ten, and Emmitsburg on top, nine to three. Needham tries the point after, and it is good. Emmitsburg has gone on top of Urbandale, 10 to three. We'll be back in just a moment. Top of this football game, 10 to three over Urbandale. And the 73 yard touchdown pass from Chuck Winkleblack to Jeff Johnson ties a 3A playoff game record. Down in Iowa City, a final now, the University of Iowa has just completed a five and six season, defeating the Michigan State Spartans 33 to 23. Dan Needham set to kick off. Ryan Fries and Rod Klein are deep. And it will go to Klein. Urbandale will have 40 seconds to try to move this football 76 yards. Pat Weir making the stop for Emmitsburg.
First and 10, Urbandale at their own 24-yard line. And off to White. And he doesn't get much. And that might be the final play of the first half. Mike Klepper making the stop, coming up from his linebacker slot. will be the final play of the half as we go into halftime. Emmitsburg on top 10 to 3 and it was a 73 yard touchdown pass that did it. Let's watch it again. Pretty isn't it? Chuck Wickle Black to Jeff Johnson and Johnson just spells that end zone and gets in there. Emmitsburg on top in this ball game 10 to 3. They scored early in the ball game on a field goal. And then Urbandale came back and got another field goal. But that big 73-yard touchdown pass from Winkleblack to Johnson is the difference at this point, and Emmitsburg is on top 10 to 3. Russ Gondek has Dwayne Twaite on the sideline. Coach Dwayne Twaite of the Emmitsburg E-Hawks, we mentioned that you had to make your own luck happen in the first half, especially with that long play. How do you feel about the first well, half play? We really hurt ourselves early in the half with a couple turnovers, but uh, I'm real happy with our ball club's coming back. We think we maybe picked up a little momentum here with that last touchdown. It was a super play, a super catch, just well executed and uh, well done. And they've had the capabilities to do this throughout the year. Looking for better field position in the second half? Right, yeah, definitely. It's really hurt us. So we've hurt ourselves with turnovers, and that gives us all poor field position. But we got a game ball club. They're going to come back. we got to play better second half, Saul. So. Hey, Coach, good luck in the second half. Okay. Dwayne Tway to the Emmitsburg Ehawks. Now back to Bob Hogue in the booth. We'll be back for more high school football championship action from the Unidome in just a moment. 